It's small fundamental things done consistently over long periods of time that create drastic results in your life. So let's jump into the training. So the first thing, let's talk about the business model. We need to help you focus in on one business model. And I want to get you going on a business model that's got in like a hundred percent time and location independence. There's no ceiling to how much you can earn and you can get started with very low amounts of money and you can start earning money while you're learning and kind of building your assets. High margins are key and residual income and multiple streams of income are a very powerful component of the business model. So what is the business model? It's affiliate marketing. And I think it's the best starting point because it's the fastest path to money. It minimizes the number of skills that you really need to learn. You don't have to become a master of sales copy day one, because that's an extremely challenging process. I'm still learning even after 10, 15 years of making money online, I'm still really sharpening my skill of copywriting. So you get to eliminate that from the skills you have to learn. It allows you to focus on growing your audience and growing your list. And what that does is it builds you an asset that you can apply in many different directions as you continue to grow. So at some point you can promote physical products. You can create products. You can create coaching programs. You can do services. There's a lot of things you can do once you have an audience of people who know, like, and trust you and using the affiliate marketing business model is the best way to get income going while you grow your audience, while you grow your list. So the opportunities, as I mentioned, that grow beyond affiliate marketing, because once you have a list, opportunities are everywhere. You can put on events, you can sell books, courses, membership, coaching, done for you, done with you, physical products, CDs, DVDs, dropshipping, manufacturing, joint ventures, advertising. There's a lot of ways you can earn income. It all comes from having that audience of people who know, like, and trust you. And the fastest way to grow that while monetizing it is through affiliate marketing. So your job as an affiliate marketer is to save your audience members time and money by doing the research for them. Your goal is to essentially help them solve their problems and achieve their goals. And they're probably very busy individuals and they're looking for people who they can trust, who they can rely on the opinions of others. So they don't have to go down the rabbit hole searching for all the different options and spend 10, 20 hours researching all the various options within this problem to find the right solution. They want somebody they can trust so they can know when they've got a problem, they can go search from them or when they get that kind of email that explains explains this is the best solution for the problem. They're ready to go. They're ready to buy. You become their trusted advisor. So that's kind of the big picture of where you're going. And the whole business model is based on you giving value and really helping others. And it's an amazing feeling when you're able to earn the income that supports your lifestyle while giving value to others. The more people you help, the faster your income grows, the bigger problems you help people solve, the faster your income grows. And there's a great quote that I live by at this point in my life. You can have everything in life you want if you will just help other people get what they want. It's so true. Your income, your revenue, your kind of abundance is a byproduct of the help you're putting out into the world, how many people and how big of problems are you helping them with? So it's not a get rich quick plan, right? This is the fast track. Yes, but it's not something that you're going to click a button twice and overnight have money come into your account. Those are the kinds of tactics that fake gurus try to sell you. And I'm here to be extremely real with you. And when you build an asset, it takes time. Just like if you were to build a real estate asset on a piece of property, you have to dig a hole. You have to pour a foundation. You have to put up framing, right? You frame the house and for 80% of the build time, it barely even looks like a house, but then you get into the polish and the finish and that's when it all ties together. It's a different type of analogy, but you have to realize that it just flat out takes work to build the foundation, to build your core, to build out your asset, but it's an asset that can generate income for you and your family for decades to come as I'm walking proof of. So I like the freight train analogy. If you imagine a freight train that is hooked up like a diesel locomotive that's hooked up to a, a hundred cars of coal or, or shipping containers or whatever they are, a hundred full cars, and you have these diesel locomotive engines at the front of this train, it's at a dead stop. The amount of power and energy required for that freight train to get up to speed, which is probably about 60 miles per hour, is insane. It is a, a, a ridiculous amount of energy to go from zero to five miles per hour 
hour, not to mention all the way up to 60. But once that train has momentum and it's at speed, it takes a whole lot less energy for that train to maintain 60 miles per hour. And that's what we're doing. All of the effort is front loaded, but once you get your momentum going, once you get your kind of routines, you build the muscles, you build the skills, it seems, it feels like it gets easier. You keep doing the same thing and you're able to generate a lot more significant and drastic results with much less energy input, thus freeing up time to do more of what you love, to travel, to spend more time with your family or whatever those goals are for you. Let's talk about starting budgets. Uh, my wife and I started for under $100. That was all the money we could muster up. It was, I literally remember it was $95.40 for a domain name and web hosting. And they didn't even install WordPress for us back in the day. Um, Minimum, you're going to need to invest about $500 within your first year. It's not all up front. I think you could get started today for under $100 like I did. It, the, the bare minimum would probably be about $50. Um, really, if you're able to spend about $300 within the first month or two, it's going to give you some significant advantages, and you'll see why further in the training. Um, if you're able to budget about $5,000 in your first year, you can leverage paid traffic. Now, paid traffic gives you an opportunity to grow your list more quickly. And again, your list is the ultimate asset that you're building. It doesn't guarantee that you're going to grow your list more quickly. Um, it changes what you need to focus on. It changes the daily activities and the things you track within the business. I'm going to get really detailed on both approaches in this video. So if you're on a total bootstrap budget like I was, I'm going to cover the exact steps, the exact tools, how to get that going. If you're in a position, where you're like, I could easily budget $5,000 over the next year, which averages out $450 or $400 a month or so. Then in that situation, I'm going to show you exactly what you need to focus and how to get things going in that direction as well. Um, for me at this point, I am operating in both of these arenas, but I didn't migrate over to the, um, the paid side of things until really three, four years in, we were generating 10 grand a month every month. That's when I shifted my focus uh, to add on more kind of skill growth, more challenges through going into the paid traffic arena. It's best to focus on one method first. So you're going to pick one of these two approaches and you're going to stick with it until you get momentum, until you get massive momentum, and then you can add on the other one as you choose. So you are going to be building skills no matter what. There's no way to build a successful long-term business that's going to offer you lifestyle income without building new skills and building skills takes time. I don't care if this is surfing. I don't care if it's gardening. I don't care if it's shooting basketballs. I, every skill, ice skating, right? Every skill takes time to learn. Now, each skill has a learning curve. That's the time it takes to really master the skill. And what I want you to do is focus on taking one learning curve at a time. And I'm going to talk about how we do this, but this is a part of my 90 day challenge idea. And really it's about working with one skill, doing that one thing over and over enough to where it becomes easy. It becomes a habit. Your brain rewires to the point where publishing to WordPress or publishing YouTube videos or daily email marketing becomes your new normal. At that point, you're ready to add on the next skill and then the next skill. And that is how you build all of the different skills. If you try to do everything on day two, you're going to overwhelm yourself and that's a big problem. So remember one new skill at a time will help you identify what that one is. And no, you're building a more found, more valuable foundation for yourself, for your family. Um, once you build these digital marketing skills, the skills of persuasion and copywriting, you can apply them to any business in America or the world, right? Whatever country you might be in. And there is an opportunity to earn income all around you once you build these skills. But I think you're going to love that you can focus all that energy on your asset and really, really build your income for yourself. Um, so the number one challenge is overwhelm. For people getting going, there's so many moving parts. There's so many different things. And I already talked about this. Learn one skill at a time. You have to shift and become a producer of content. Even if you're doing the paid ad side of things, you need to put out more content than you consume. And really the big trick is to unsubscribe from all the fake gurus, from all those email lists. Your inbox is your to-do list from other people, right? It's other people's to-do list for you. People who email you want you to do something for them. It might be attend their webinar. It might be to watch their pre-launch videos. It might be a jab in order to get that sale later, but ultimately they have a kind of to-do 
list for you. You need to block all of that out. So 100% of your time and energy can be focused on doing the work, which we're going to talk about here. So the key skills to master, I think copywriting is probably one of the core key skills that everyone doing digital marketing can and should learn inside of the, the membership program here inside of the forums under the sales tab. I have a link to um, some of my favorite kind of copywriting resources for you to, to start to dabble in uh, reading the old ads, reading the books is key. Direct response marketing is the idea of it's kind of the antithesis of brand marketing. Brand marketing is simply buy enough eyeball space, whether it's billboards or anywhere and run display ads to just get brand awareness. The opposite of that is direct response. It's where everything you're publishing asks a person to do something. It could be an engagement. It could be an opt-in. It could be a funnel that has a one-time offer and a one-click upsell, but that's the difference between a direct response marketer and ultimately a brand based marketer. You are becoming a direct response marketer. Everything that you're doing is designed to at least move the relationship forward. Um, and we'll talk more about how this works, but that's one of the keys. Then the key skill to master is problem solving. You're not only solving your problems of how do I kind of get the result I want online, right? Publishing on WordPress, publishing on YouTube. Uh, how do I record a video on my cell phone that has good audio? Those types of problems that you'll, you will kind of encounter in growing as a content creator and as an affiliate marketer, but also your whole job, as we talked about earlier, is to be a problem solver at scale for your audience. So there's two levels of problem solving. So learning how to solve problems is actually a core skill for you. Now, part one, we're going to get into the nitty gritty at this point, and it's all about your audience and your niche. A lot of people try to convince you to start with choose a product, go find something that's selling and then dot, 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 right? And there's a really easy analogy of that shows why that's a terrible idea. And that's why most people who follow those fake gurus don't make it. The analogy is if you want to make money in the restaurant world, this is from Gary Halbert, who's a great copywriter. Um, it's, it's an adaptation of something he talked about. So there's two ways to get rich in the restaurant world. Uh, number one, you lock yourself in your lab, in your kitchen, you make the most amazing meal ever. And it takes you weeks to get all the ingredients and everything just right. And then you go out with your meal that you made and you try to find somebody to buy the meal. That's the difficult way. That's the way that rarely, rarely works. That's product first. And that's the wrong way. So what's the right way? Well, it's to go find a hungry audience and then offer them something to eat. And if you can find a large hungry audience looking for something to eat, they can't find anything to eat and you offer them something. It could be a pretzel cart. It could be a hot dog cart. It could be pizza. It could be anything, right? That is the path to big time success. That's why we start with the audience first. So who can you help? Let's start by looking inside. Who do you have the ability to help? Look at your story and your results. Do you have an interesting story in any realm of problem solving within your life? Have you overcome physical challenges in your life? Have you overcome mental challenges in your life? Have you overcome professional or financial or love and relationship based challenges in your life? Have you lost a bunch of weight at some period in your life? Have you gone through something traumatic and it actually helped you kind of become a better person or a more fit person or change your perspective in some way? And that perspective could potentially help others. Um, this really goes up to this idea of what is your unique advantage? Every single one of us has a very unique upbringing. We have unique history. We have unique parents. We have a unique uh, way we look at the world. And out of all of that, we are each uniquely suited to help others with something. And that is your unfair advantage. That's your unique advantage. And ultimately it, you want to find that and uncover that. I have the ability to create videos that happen to be able to stay on topic. I can cut them out pretty quickly. And I have found that in my, even out of my beliefs that were two years ago, I didn't believe I was a content creator. I have found that I actually have a very good communication skill in this medium. So I've been running with it, right? Once I realized that it took years for me to realize that surprisingly, um, I've been running forward full speed. Okay. My videos are clear, coherent. I help people. They get it. I'm in, I'm out. I'm done. Boom. Let's make lots of videos then, right? That is the kind of approach. So what is that for you? Could be talking, could be writing. It could be editing. It could be running teams. It could be running systems. 
systems. There's a lot of ways that this could work out. And again, your unique advantage might be you worked as a dental technician and you helped your dentistry practice double their business because you implemented one or two systems within the front desk. And now you can go apply that to other businesses, other dental practices. That might be your unique advantage that you got 20 years of experience in the dental practice world, working directly with customers, improving the customer value for that dentistry practice. So look into your past, what are those unique advantages? And then if you don't have a story, right? The stories are so key. If you don't have proof already of something you've accomplished, something you've overcome, some story in your life where you went from the zero to hero, then build a story, right? It takes more time to build your story, but you can document the process as you go, which is a really powerful way to show. So a theory here is if I was, you know, so I'm six foot one, if I weighed 315 pounds at six foot one, um, I'm in a dangerously overweight situation. And and then I could document the process. If I get really committed to losing weight, I'm going to get down to 190 and I really, really focus in. I document the process as I try new diets, as I try new willpower hacks to get myself off the couch, as I try new exercise routines to get me going. I can document everything I do. And then my story of going from zero to hero is out there in the wild. And all along, as I'm testing new diets, as I'm testing new supplements, as I'm testing new exercise programs, there's affiliate opportunities in all of those. And just like people will tune in to watch The Biggest Loser TV show every single week when it's on, people would love to tune into your email list to hear your progress as you continue to take progress because it would be inspiring for so many people. They would really emotionally connect with you as you go through the process as long as you're being honest and authentic during the process. It does double the number of challenges and learning curves, right? Then you got to learn how to lose weight. You got to go through all of the effort there. Then you got to learn how to document it, whether you're vlogging, whether you're writing blog posts, etc. But it's worth it in the end. You get a dual result in that situation. You accomplish some big, positive, powerful life change. And also you do create an audience that becomes an email list and an asset for you moving forward. It's totally doable. It just takes more energy. So one of the core things for you to really think about is can you really help people? And the answer is yes, of course you can help people. Like we all human beings are on this earth to help other human beings. That's a part of this human experience we're going through. So figuring out what's the easy way for you to help people. What are you already good at that you can help people with is the fastest way. It minimizes the number of learning curves. It minimizes the time required, but if you don't have anything that pops into mind, well, how can you help yourself? What problems and challenges do you have in your life that other people have? And how can you help yourself? A lot of the best dating advice websites and gurus actually came out of a place of, I'm a total nerd. I don't know how to get date. I don't know how to do the whole relationship thing. So they had to figure out the solution for their problem. And then once they figured it out, they started sharing it with others. And that's how they grew their brand. So ultimately there's a process. You want to help yourself first, and then you want to help others. Helping others can be one-on-one -on -one, or it can be in small group format. And then once you've gone through the process of creating the kind of goal achieved for it, once you've gone through achieving the goal for yourself, then you want to focus on helping others achieve the goal. During this whole process, you're kind of coming up with your bit. It's your philosophy. It's your way of doing things. Your way to lose weight and get fit for someone who's 300 pounds is probably going to be different than the other person's way. And that's what you're learning through kind of working on yourself first, then working on others, and then you take it out to the world. And of course, you can document the process as you're going through on all three of these levels here. Proof is the ultimate key to everything. Your story is going to be extremely powerful. And if you have that documentation where it shows you in that state at where I show myself at 310 pounds, right? And then I've got now the videos I'm, I'm, 220 getting pretty darn fit and working my way down still the proof is in the pudding in that situation right like you can see clearly that i have i am well on the path to achieving the goal um your audience is naturally skeptical most human beings are skeptical by nature i think it's something wired into our brain and especially more so online many people have been scammed online 
A lot of people have bought into courses that don't quite deliver on their promise. Um, they've had troubles getting their money back. They've got stuck on subscriptions that they weren't able to cancel. So the skepticism is big time and proof is how you overcome the skepticism proof with your personal story, but then third party validation through proof is super powerful through case studies and really testimonials showing that you've been able to help others. That's one of the only ways that they're going to get the belief that you can actually help them when they see that you've accomplished the goal and you've helped dozens and dozens and dozens of other people accomplish the goal as well. It becomes that much more believable that you might be able to help me because we all think that, oh, well, if you knew how messed up I was, then you wouldn't say you can actually help me. And it's like, no, no, no. When I built my business, for example, in this world online, I had zero money, $50,000 in student loan debt. I had to move back into my parents' house because I had no rent money. I had sold both my car and my wife's car going all in on a fake guru scam. I was about as, I was, I was beyond flat broke. I was negative 50 and I couldn't even pay my student loan bills at that point in time. And I was about to go into collections. That's where I started this process of growing a business online. So if it worked for me, it can work for you type situation, right? We all think our stories are super powerful, but then you realize everyone thinks everyone's story is super powerful and we're all, we all think we're kind of messed up. So being honest and acknowledging that just like I share my story, I didn't jump on the scene and get this all dialed in my first try. I failed repeatedly. I failed purposefully kind of constantly to really find the things that work. And ultimately that's why I'm able to share this with you, which is probably a reason why you've bought in to this membership program to get this training, right? It all works in this way. We've talked a lot about the bigger picture. We've been kind of zoomed out up in the clouds. Let's start to zoom in a bit and talk about choosing your niche. So I would say personally, I believe that the key thing in choosing your niche is choosing a niche that you have a story in choosing something that you've got a lot to talk about within your story. And again, if you don't have the story, you can build the story, but it's going to take extra time. So know that you're, you're always on the lookout for those stories. Um, you want to find an underserved segment within the big three niche, right? So the big three is love, health, and money. And if you can find an underserved segment within that big three, that's where you have the possibility of standing out. It's extremely difficult to go into the dating advice market. It's not that difficult to go into the dating advice for 60 year old divorced men or dating advice for 60 year old widowers, right? Like there's these sub niches of people who have problems, right? We all as humans feel unsatisfied or unfulfilled when we don't have companionship. So there's this longing for companionship. And if you've gone through that and you have a story around that and you can help others with that, Another example would be like CBD oils, for example, right? If you have a compelling story about how CBD oils helped you overcome some physical ailment, helped you get through chemotherapy with cancer, et cetera, and that's a part of your story and you want to go promote chemo, you want to go promote CBDs to other people, that story is going to be one of the most powerful aspects of your entire affiliate marketing business. Lastly, you want to find passionate, addicted buyers. So passionate buyers are people who are just, they are consumed by that niche that you're in. Now this consumption can be one of two ways. Number one is the physical ailment. I have this problem going on in my life and I am consuming myself with the different ways to solve the problem, right? Someone who wants to lose weight might be consuming themselves with all of the different diets, with all of the different exercise programs, with all of the different supplements, right? With all of the different procedures available, that is a very passionate person. Then there's addicted buyers. An addicted buyer is someone who's going to keep buying products, tools, services, etc., because the goal they're seeking to achieve is either a massive long-term goal that takes uh, many levels of, of working with, like the, the losing weight, there's the diet, there's the exercise, the supplements, etc., or I guess, let me say what we're, we're, we're not wanting to go towards is when your product solves a problem and then they don't need any more prop products. So the example I've used before that's really clear is, uh, let's say a resume. Let's say you teach people how to write a resume that's going to help them get a job. So your audience is clearly people who don't have jobs. They buy your program, they go through, they write out their resume and all of a sudden they get a job. 
and that's it. They're gone. They're not going to need your services anymore versus a golfer who's working on their golf game is always going to be buying new workout tapes, new kind of how tos. They're going to be doing golf lessons with their local pros. They're going to be buying new equipment. They are addicted buyers. And you'd be amazed at how many little niches have addicted buyers. It could be in all three, right? Investors, people who are pro investors, they will buy all the books, they will buy all the courses, even if it's not their trading style, even if it's not exactly what they're doing, they want to learn, they will subscribe to many different paid publications to get all of the different ideas from all of the different experts, right? So they're addicted to buying information on their topic of investing, so they can really get themselves to the point of feeling and knowing that they're making the right investing decision for themselves. Um, dating people will buy lots of dating things, golf, drones, tennis, all these kind of hobbies, people who love horses, uh, crafting, yarn, needlepoint, um, quilting, for example, like it really goes on and on fishing fishermen, my goodness, will they buy more lures, more lures, of course they will. So that's what you want to ultimately find is passionate, addicted buyers. So here's how to come up with a niche template um, and some examples for you. So how to blank for blank. This is an extremely basic template designed to help you match together a core desire and an underserved segment. So how to lose weight for divorced men over 50, right? Now we're talking to the divorced men over 50. Theoretically, you have a story in that realm, right? You got divorced at 50 and you were 35 pounds overweight and you felt that it was important for you to take that under control and get going. And here's what you did. That story will attract other men who are in a similar position to you, to you. And that big desire to lose weight that is shared amongst lots and lots of people in lots of age ranges and genders and physical locations is now focused down to that men over 50 segment who you have a story with or dating for single moms over 40. And I even put, you know, finding true love because maybe that's actually their core desire is to find true love. They're, they're tired of dates and they want to find true love for single moms over 40. They have very specific challenges. They have time restraints. They have specific needs being single parents. Um, if you have that story and you've been able to create true love, then you might be able to help others with that as well how to get new clients from Instagram for wedding photographers. So the big kind of desire is to get new clients. The underserved segment is the wedding photographers. And we've added even a third layer of niching down to where we're going to not only help them as digital marketing for, for wedding photographers, but we're going to help with Instagram specifically. And obviously you could, you could do portrait, um, portrait photographers, you could do uh, newborn photographers. There's all those different subsets of photographers. So there's a lot of little tweaks you can do to this basic template example. So some more examples for you, how to make money on a modern homestead. There's a modern homesteading movement where a lot of people are trying to get out of the cities and live in closer in alignment with nature. So if you've done this in any way, shape or form, you could teach that it could be soap making, it could be growing vegetables and selling them at your local farmer's market. There's a lot of ways it could work out. It could be making granola. It could be, there's a million ways that one could make money on a modern homestead. Again, we're in this big niche of the make money niche, but we're focused, so focused down on people who are into the modern homesteading movement. And obviously you need to have a story in this world in order to be of service to them and in order to build the trust for them to know, like, and trust you. So how to reverse diabetes naturally without medication. This is a little twist. And instead of the identifier of the kind of age and gender demographic gen um, identifier, we've used without medication, right? So someone who has diabetes and they want to reverse their requirement for insulin or whatever it might be, and they don't want to use medication. They're tired of taking the pills. They're tired of the medication or injecting insulin or whatever that might be. If you've overcome this challenge, you could help others do it too. Very, very potentially powerful because someone who wants to reverse diabetes naturally there, it's a consuming challenge in the moment, right? It's something that they're constantly thinking about every day. It's, it's a very big reminder in their life. And when they get to the point where they're tired of really kind of doing what they've been doing, which is using a medication based or something, then 
they're really creating new long-term habits in their life, which means they're going to be around for a long time. And there's a lot of ways you're able to help them in that situation. How to hit longer drives for golfers over 60. So longer drives is the compelling need. It's not just how to golf better, right? It's longer drives. It could be a putting course. It could be a chipping course. It could be a fairway course. It could be how to get out of the rough. Um, golfers over 60 could be golfers over 65. It could be female golfers over 60. There's a lot of ways you can slice and dice that. Um, how to earn 10% returns investing your self-directed IRA. So someone who has a self-directed IRA, they don't feel like they're making enough money off of it. They're learning about the world of investing. They want to get better returns. Bingo. If you've been able to generate 10% returns year in, year out with a self-directed IRA, that could be an opportunity there. But again, your story is key. Now, how do you find great affiliate products? Within the world of PowerPoint, I created this slide. There are three ways for me to um, add emphasis to a word. I can bold it. I can italicize it. I can underline it. Actually, there's four. I can do it all caps. Notice great has all of them. So many people are promoting rubbish because it's got a decent sales letter, but it sucks. Like they're promoting things that absolutely suck in order to make a quick buck. You have one reputation in this world, even if you're building it up as a brand and you're, you're kind of hiding behind a brand. If you're not truly promoting great products that absolutely help people get their desired result, products that you would promote to your mom, to your best friend, products that you would be proud to have your name on, then you've got it all wrong and you're shooting yourself in the foot and you might be able to make a flash in the pan success. You will never create the long-term success that's going to give you lifestyle freedom. I'm talking paying off mortgages. I'm talking filling up retirement accounts, retiring your spouse, those levels of abundance and income only happen when you're truly aligned, helping people get great products that absolutely solve their problems and help them achieve their goals. Cool. I think I stressed that enough and I've kept this great word stress throughout the presentation. So again, would you sell your mom this product? And here's a big question. Are you stoked you bought it? Because you did buy it, right? Like you've actually bought the products that you're promoting, like everything that you promote, you actually have been through yourself. You've actually gotten access to, you've actually utilized it and gotten results with it. It's very, very important for you to take that level of passion, that level of um, discernment with what you're promoting, because your job is to be that researcher for them. And if you're truly saying that this green powder is the best green powder for making green smoothies on the go, that better be the green powder that you actually have in your cupboard at home. That's how the game works. Cool. I think I stressed that enough. So how do you find great affiliate products? Well, look at what you've bought, right? What do you have in your cabinets or in your, in your golf bag? Uh, what have you already bought that has helped you on your path? That's the other side of that is if you're currently kind of building your story, what are those things you're trying as you're on your path? Do honest reviews of them. Your reviews should not always be, this was great, you need it, this was great, you need it, this was great, you need it, because then it puts this kind of bias when someone looks at your website and all your reviews happen to just promote everything. So yeah, you need this, yeah, you need that. They're gonna be like, I don't really trust this person. Like they're just saying that I need everything to try to sell me stuff, right? You have to be honest and you really, really have to focus those things that you're promoting, like all you need is one great story, one great hook and one great product. And you could build a $10,000 per month business from there. You can add on many, many, many more products over time, but it really does only take one. So be sure you're on the lookout. You're working really hard to find that one product that absolutely is great. A good example of this is ClickFunnels, right? Like I could, ClickFunnels has a very lucrative commission structure. I could make an insane amount of money if I was willing to go actually promote ClickFunnels to my list, to my audience, to you, et cetera. Um, I think it works for a few people in very select situations, but it's, it's not as broadly beneficial as they try to make it sound on their stuff. So I could ignore the fact that it's buggy. I could ignore the fact that they have rubbish support. I could ignore the fact that it's a uh, closed system that kind of locks you and handcuffs you into those monthly payments that you don't need to make in order to make a buck, right? I could do that. 
But instead, I took the opposite approach of being very, very brutally honest about ClickFunnels, about my experiences, and about the alternatives. And that actually has been a good differentiation for me, but it's built a lot of trust because everyone else in the world promoting ClickFunnels is like, oh, you need it. It's the greatest thing ever because they're all thinking about themselves and those big old commission checks they're hoping to get. When I am that breath of fresh air being like, I don't know, this is why I left it, right? My video on why I left ClickFunnels is a hugely positive power video that's connected me with a lot of interested people. And it was through my willingness to be vulnerable, to be honest, to put myself out. I get flamed on that, right? That's, that's what I'm getting at here. You have to be willing to do those things because ultimately your allegiance needs to be with your audience, not the product you're promoting on the back end. So another way to find great affiliate products is find those mass market products that don't speak directly to your segment. So the idea of the, um, the divorced guys over 50. So you're talking to the divorced guys over 50 who want to lose weight and you can go promote Organifi, for example, which is a great product on ClickBank. I'm going to show you an analysis of that product here in a minute. Um, so that product is a green smoothie. Uh, it's a green powder to make smoothies and it is a weight loss product. And ultimately they're kind of just like the best green green smoothie stuff for everyone because everybody needs green smoothies. So they're a very broad mass market product. And when you really focus in and you own that segment and you dominate the segment of men over 50, right? You know where they're at. They're busy. They're professionals. They got kids. They got lives. They're, they're, they got all kinds of stuff going on. And you're able to tailor that product specifically for them. You can literally dominate that segment of the niche because you've now made this mass market product seem like the exact thing for them. And ultimately that would be one of the supplement side of things. Then there's the exercise program. You could do the same thing. You go find this broad mass market exercise program that is amazing and you help them realize how it's specifically amazing and tailored for them being a divorced guy over 50. So you actually become the interpreter, if you will, of these mass market ideas, products, and concepts down to that specific niche. And you take everything so you would look at all of the ingredients in the green powder for the green smoothies, right? From Organifi. And you would talk about how each ingredient is extra beneficial to them being a man in his fifties because he has different needs than a young strapping 23 year old, right? So you kind of become that interpreter on how this all works for them. So this little um, mathematical equation, ClickBank gravity plus the rebill amount equals a high average dollar per sale. Let's actually get in. So this screenshot right here is from within the ClickBank marketplace. Now I do have a separate video on how to analyze ClickBank marketplace, but I think this will give you a good enough overview to get you going. So up top, you can see I'm in the health and fitness category. I did not zero down into the weight loss portion. I just kept it at the health and fitness because I want to analyze all of the different products in the different categories. Sometimes vendors on ClickBank will put their product in a less competitive category. They might give up a little relevance to try to get a top ranking. So I like to look at all of them. On the left, you can see I set the gravity from five to 100 plus, and I set the average dollar per sale at $29 which means a minimum of $29 per sale. And those are the only search parameters. When I got my search results, I sorted the results by the average dollar per sale. You can see that with the top arrow pointing right, the drop down, I set it to average dollar per sale. Here are the two that showed up. Organifi, which is a green juice, and also Bio Optimizers, which is a digestive supplement. I believe it's like a probiotic. So you'll notice I've got the arrows underneath pointing to the affiliate pages on each of them. I kind of talked about this in the Big Idea Workshop that you can go inside of their affiliate programs and you can figure out what their big idea is generally from the tools and resources they give you as an affiliate. I don't usually use the swipe emails. I don't really use their banner images often. I will sometimes in, in very hyper relevant content, um, but I'm more in there to try to figure out what is the hook that they're trying to get me to communicate for them. And then I'm analyzing it with, okay, how does that resonate with my audience? the guys over 50, the divorce guys over 50, right? I'm always trying to take that tweak on it for my segment. 
So in the boxes, you can see the average dollar per sale on both of these is over $90. That means when you make a sale on average, it's going to be almost a hundred dollars. That is amazing. How much money you, you making a hundred dollars per sale without having to create the product, without having to create the, the sales letter, without having to create the marketing material, without having to create the supplements and the distribution and the fulfillment. And like, this is why affiliate marketing is such a powerful business model is because you get to tap into this power. So down below, I've got it circled on the lower one. Um, that's replicated up above the stats. You can see the initial dollar per sale on Organifi at 77 bucks on um, the bio optimizers, it's $42. So that's the average front end sale. So in this, the bio optimizers, most people spend a little less on the first purchase, but the rebuild potential goes higher. If you go two to the right, you can see the average rebuild total for Organifi, it's $191. And then down for bio optimizers, it's $256. That's a huge potential sale for you with the rebuilds. So what I'm trying to help you understand, which is what we talked about in the last slide is products that have a low upfront cost for your customers, but a high rebuild percentage and a high rebuild value means you can promote a product that's not terribly expensive. A $40 supplement is not out of control. It's not a $200 supplement, right? It's a very kind of, it's, it's in alignment with all of the other supplements that they'll see at their whole foods or their, their natural grocers their vitamin cottages. Then the company themselves through their funnels, through their follow-up, through their remarketing, et cetera, makes additional sales for you, generating additional kind of commissions for you. You work on driving front end sales. They're optimizing the back end sales. So do you notice how it says average percent rebuild? So on the top one on Organifi, it's 46% of the people who buy rebuild. And on the lower one, it's 28% of the people who buy rebuild. So on the lower one, one in four sales will buy more than just the one thing. And on average, that person who buys more will spend $250. So on average, one in four sales that you send them will generate over $250 for them. It's pretty amazing. So on Organifi, it's about 46%. So almost half the people, so almost every other person who buys their first Organifi powder is going to buy again. And on average, they'll spend $191. So every other sale you're sending them is a $191 sale. I think it makes sense. Um, what I'm trying to get at here is that you want to sell, you want to promote great products that are not only proven to help people, but they're proven to sell, right? They're proven to have good copy on the landing page. They're proven to convert. And you can see with a gravity of 80 for Organifi, um, that's kind of one of those numbers. It's a, um, it's, it's a ClickBank only number. It's something they made up, but that means, you know, well over 80 different affiliates are actively selling and making money with that program. That's why I set the gravity to a minimum of five that it's, it's actually a factor of it's not, there's five affiliates. It's, it's a larger number. It's a weighted average type thing. Um, but all you need to know is that seeing a gravity of over five and up in the fifties, sixties, seventies means tons of other people are making sale, which means their sales copy is working, right? They are able to convert traffic into customers. You have to make sure you're aligning with great products. And part of a great product is that it gets the desired result for your audience. But the other part of a great product is they get the sale. So when you send them traffic, they're actually going to convert sales. So you actually earn commissions. And these are really the key pieces that we look at. And you can analyze the ClickBank marketplace in a bunch of different niches. Um, ultimately, I believe that your goal should be to find five to seven great products. You're talking excellent product ideas, excellent sales copy, a good value for them. It's best when it's that low upfront fee, uh, under $50 product on the front end is so much easier for you to sell than a $200 product on the front end. And you want to find five to seven different products because you can promote multiple things through your email list. And also you're going to need to test different offers to see which ones actually resonate best with your audience. Don't think that finding one great offer and like, Oh, I found it. This is it. I win, right? It's never that easy. It takes a lot of testing and tweaking more ways to find great affiliate products beyond just looking inside of ClickBank. Um, 
just go to Google and search your niche and then affiliate program. So literally like weight loss comma affiliate program and start looking at the results that show up. And essentially you can find your way onto their affiliate programs. A lot of great products in our world aren't on the affiliate networks. So they don't run on ClickBank or ShareSale or the other ones. What they're doing is they're running it in house. They manage it themselves with their own internal technology. Uh, Infusionsoft is a great example of this kind of technology. Most of the big uh, people using Infusionsoft to run their businesses run their affiliate program in house. ClickFunnels on the higher level also allows people to run their own affiliate in program in house. So you would need to find the product and then find their affiliate program in that kind of a situation. So another thing is just go find the great products, right? Go search around on Google, find the absolute best golf widget, right? The, the golf training thing that's the best in the world. And then just search their site, control F for find and search on their site for the word affiliate. See if you can find if they have an affiliate program. Generally, it's going to be a link down in the footer that'll explain how to get there. You can also go search for the brand name comma affiliate in Google. Then there's the other networks, share a sale, Avant link, Commission Junction, which is cj.com, and Rakuten Marketing, which is the old link share program. Of these, um, Avant Link is absolutely amazing for everything outdoor. So if you're in um, fishing, golfing, hiking, biking, snowboarding, like anything that has to do with like outdoor stores, backcountry.com, rei.com, um, Sierra Outfitters, Avant Link is the best of the best of the best. Um, Share Sale is much broader in, in what kind of offers they offer. CJ is great for physical products. They run a bunch of very large brand um, programs. And Rakuten is kind of a good variety of digital products and physical products. And then, of course, Amazon. Amazon's the biggest uh, merchant that has a affiliate program that I know of. I think they pay more to affiliates than, well, not not more as a percentage. They have a low percentage rate that they offer, but everyone trusts um, Amazon already. So you can make really good sales. Um, I've made a lot of sales on Amazon through their affiliate program with the books I recommend. Because as I read a new book and I'm in love with it, I'll send it out through my email list with a recommendation. Um, it's a very small percentage of income, but it's just one of those other little multiple streams of income. And they all add up significantly at the end of the month. Now I talked about this already. You need to analyze the sales copy on the actual affiliate program themselves. You need to make sure that they're able to really convert cold traffic or your warm traffic into paying customers. That's so key. You, you can generally get most of the affiliate networks are gonna have some sort of a number EPC is the earnings per click. They say that's the average earnings you'll get for every click you send them. Um, so it's like a weighted average. And then there's the gravity score. Um, share sale has its kind of like power score, which, which is their ranking on how well that it converts. So you always want to look to see if it's actually converting and then watch their sales material, actually really analyze it. Like, does it offend you? Or are you like, Ooh, I could never say that to my mom. I would never send my mom that sales video. If you have that feeling, don't send it to your list. Right. Um, I've stated clearly low initial sale with upsells and or recurring is great because then you're able to promote a low upfront product and you still can make the larger commissions on the back end. And that idea of would you recommend this product to your best friend based on the sales copy, right? Because sometimes you might get these sales videos for these weight loss products that use kind of shady ish type persuasion techniques. And you're like, man, I don't think I could put my name on that. Great. Honor that and don't. My wife and I have walked away from many, many, many opportunities to promote things because it's like, I couldn't really put my name on that um, for, for one reason or another. So know that, that that's a part of the game. Um, okay. At this point, you know, the business model that you're working, you know, the core audience you're focused on, you know, your niche, right? Your little segment within one of the big three, and now, you know, your affiliate products. So we need to run a feasibility analysis. Is it possible for you to get enough attention for you to get enough traffic for you to get enough momentum going on within that little sub niche to actually make enough money to where you can fire your boss and get out of the cubicle or to 10 X what you're doing already. So we need to do some keyword and trend research. And the goal is one of the first goals, whether you're going the paid route or not, can you find 100 to 200 separate topics that you could eventually create content on? If you can't find 200 topics for you to create content on, you will run out of ammunition later in the game. Some niches don't have that much breadth 
to them. They don't have that much width. And ultimately, it's best when you can find a niche or a sub niche segment that has four to eight core categories. You've heard me talk about this in the weight loss world. Weight loss is simply stated, it's consume less energy than you expand. So there's multiple sides of this, right? There's what are you consuming in your body, which is diet based information. There could be a supplements aspect to that. So that would be category number two. There's exercise. That would be category number three. Then there's mindset, right? How to get yourself in the right frame of mind. That's number four. Someone who's actually in the niche could probably think of five or six for the categories. And then I would go do the keyword research for each of those categories. And I can tell you right away that you're going to find 200 potential topics. And we're going to look at um, kind of an interesting little hack on if you can identify somebody who's producing the result you want in, in a similar niche to yours, maybe a different segment, um, but, a, but a similar niche. So like I think uh, Jillian Michaels, I think she's uh, really well known in the weight loss thing. So you could, if she's kind of an active blogger or has a team of bloggers, she's probably not writing her blog post. You, there's a way to go analyze her site to see how many topics she's written on. Um, but before we get there, I'll show you that in a second. Um, but here's other places for you to go search for the topics and the categories. Google auto suggest, just go to Google and actually start typing into the search bar, the kind of phrases you would search if you were honestly trying to solve that problem. You know, if you're trying to lose weight, go search in how to lose weight, how to lose weight fast, how to lose weight in 10 days, how to lose 14 pounds, how to lose 20 pounds. And Google's going to automatically suggest it'll drop down. Google's trying to anticipate what you're searching for. So each one of those anticipations is actually a potential topic. Answerthepublic.com is a kind of a goofy website that, that it's got this weird dude on the front who's impatiently waiting for you to type in a search phrase, but you type in a search phrase and it analyzes your search phrase in several different ways. And it gives you this big kind of wheel of, of responses, a lot of different questions, how to questions, why type questions. So go through and pick out the different ones. You don't want to just see like, oh, okay, answer the public came back with a hundred. I'm good. You really actually need to think about this. You need to take time with each of them and be like, is that really actually relevant? relevant to my 50 year old dude trying to lose weight. Who's just recently divorced. Like, okay, cool. Like that is put it on a spreadsheet, probably best to build a spreadsheet or a notepad at this point, just to, to have it all done. So you don't have to go back and, and rework it. Google's keyword planner. That tool is technically designed for their pay-per-click system but it will spit out tons and tons of keywords. The, the search volume data you get is not going to be super accurate unless you have an active ad account. Um, but ultimately it's a great way to get a bunch of different phrases. Keywordtool.io is a Google auto suggest scraper. Great to throw your main keywords in there and see what kind of topics come out. Then you want to run a lot of them through Google trends. Is this something that's trending up? Is this something that's trending flat or trending down? It's not terrible if it's trending down because sometimes search behavior changes. For example, internet marketing is kind of trending down, but digital marketing is trending up. And all that's happened is there's been a culture shift from using the phrase internet marketing to using the phrase digital marketing. Um, so it's not a terrible sign if it's trending down, but, but know that, that sometimes it can be phrase changes and there's reasons it can work. And this is the, the actual snippet that you would search on Google, the site colon, and then the competitor URL.com. No spaces, all mashed up together. You can take any website out there that's being indexed by Google and you just go to Google and you type in site colon and put their URL, no www, no HTTP, none of that, no forward slashes. It'll tell you how many pages they have indexed. So on this next screen, we have an example. So Dr. Axe is in the, um, I don't know, natural health world, I guess. And I used him as an example here. And I just typed in site colon draxe.com, no spaces, no punctuation. And I searched and you can see it pulled up 6,170 search results. That's pretty amazing. And those aren't search, excuse me, those are results from the search. So what it's saying is when I use the site colon search parameter, I'm saying, I want Google, Google, I want you to bring me every page or post you have indexed from drx.com. And this is it. And Google has 6,170 different pages or posts indexed. Now you can't just say, yep, there's 200. Maybe in this world, if you're close enough to him, you're like, yo, he's got 6,000 like that. That is enough. Um, but ultimately you want to scroll through page by page and pull out the topics that are hyper relevant to you. You can add another keyword at the end of this. 
So in that search parameter, you could do site colon drax.com space um, essential oils, right? And then it'll give you everything he's talked about essential oils, um, space chiropractor, and it'll tell it about everything about chiropractors that he's ever said. So, so you can slice and dice the data more. You don't have to just manually go through page after page. If you're targeting a specific sub segment of what Dr. Axe talks about, use the keyword tool, use Google to your advantage to get Google to give you how many posts does he have about this or about that CBD oils, uh, weight loss, diets, etc. It will pull all of that data and then go in and analyze each one of those. So at the feasibility assessment, we now have a question. Well, we have three questions. Um, did you find seven great affiliate products to promote? Things that you're like, I'm so glad I bought this or like, Ooh, I'm buying this next paycheck I get. I'm definitely buying this product. Like this is the thing I've been looking for to help me on my journey. Like, did you find seven great affiliate products, low front end offers, recurring rebilling products, high earnings per click or high average sale value to you? Great sales copy, really good, clean sales messaging that you'd be proud to share with your mom, your cousin, your brother, your best friend, et cetera. That's key because you need to know that you can make money within the niche. Then did you find 200 topics that you can create content on? Super important that you're gonna have enough ammunition for your content marketing to go. And honestly, even if you're doing the paid side of things, you wanna see that there's a breadth of topics that your audience is searching for because you're gonna need to come up with one unique big idea, one hook for each funnel. And you need to know that there's at least several different types of things that people are searching for if you wanna make money in that niche niche. Then finally, do you have, or are you ready to build a story and proof, right? Do you already have a story in the niche? Do you already have your proof or are you 100% committed to building that out? Um, if you're thinking about the world of internet marketing right now and you're like, Ooh, I'm going to go into the internet marketing space. I'm really, really interested in making money online. I'm consumed by it. I'm going to document my process. I really, really, really recommend you don't go in that direction. You're going up against not only the biggest and best competitors in the digital marketing space, but you're also really going up against a million other people who had that same exact idea. It is an incredibly crowded space. It is so difficult to gain market share in that space. When you find an underserved audience that's outside of that main realm, your life gets 100 X easy. The reason my wife and I were, were able and are able and have been able to create the lifestyle business that, that really, truly it's, it's incredible is because we found an underserved audience and we've gone and give a ton of value to that audience, right? We've really built ourselves out as kind of some of the foremost people within that tiny, tiny sub segment of our world. And that is why we were able to create the success. It's not the fancy digital marketing. It's not this brand that's bringing in the bacon in this family by any means, right? It's, it's really the reach and how we're able to stand out because we're being of service to a small niche. So let's keep going. Now we're into the build your audience and this is where the paths split, right? This is where we kind of will look at the $500 first year budget versus the $5,000 first year budget a little bit separately. Mm. Pretty much out of bottle of water. Number one, um, we go on to my Waterloo. I don't know if you've tried these. They're kind of like LaCroix. It's um, sparkling water with um, black cherry essence. It's about the best darn thing in the world. Um, so get that going, keep myself moving. I hope you're staying focused. I hope you're enjoying this. And honestly, there's a lot to cover to help you get this going right, but ultimately there's nothing like building a solid foundation. I want you to build an absolute skyscraper. I want you to build the biggest skyscraper in your niche and it requires a massive, massive foundation. So let's jump into it here. And I've said this repeatedly, how much money do you have to invest? Can you do 500 in your first year? Can you do 5,000 in your first year? Pay per click as possible when you get over the $5,000 mark in your first year, and pay-per-click can increase your reach and your lead growth faster, but it doesn't guarantee it. You got to be pretty good at what you're doing. And there's a really good chance that you're going to spend most or all of that money learning things that don't work to find that one thing that does work that you can then do over and over and over. And that might not show up until year two. So you have to be willing to truly invest in the data and the ideas. 
organic content, which is the $500 in your first year approach, creates momentum you can ride for years and years. Um, I am so thankful that my wife and I started out doing organic SEO content with our first brand. That's why on the Miles Beckler brand, I've paid for zero traffic. I've never paid a penny for traffic, uh, for leads, for nothing on the Miles Beckler brand. It's been 100% focused on organic content because in two years of, I'm about two years in on creating my videos on YouTube, I've created this major wave of momentum that's gonna deliver me traffic and leads for years and years and years to come. My list grows by 30 to 50 new subscribers every day, whether I'm paddleboarding, hiking, camping, working, it doesn't matter because I've built that kind of momentum up and with paid traffic, when you stop paying, um, it all goes away. And then you're reliant on the email relationship that you've built in the email market marketing to really keep the cash flow coming in. So that's what you're doing. You're using money to try to speed up the process of growing your list, but then you need to really become a great copywriter and email marketer in order to keep the cash flow coming in from that point. So there are going to be some links in this. Obviously they're not clickable, uh, underneath this video, probably in the next post below. I'm going to organize all of these for you. So all the clickable links are below, but stick with me through the video and then you can come back and reference that as you need, or you can copy and paste that into another notepad for you. So don't feel like you need to write all these down is what I'm getting at. So the recommended tax stack, I recommend no matter which approach you go web hosting and running on WordPress, you own it. My whole DIY sales funnel video series is designed to help you get that. You can get access to the hosting that will install WordPress for you at the link right there. Then Thrive Themes membership. You do need the full membership, which will give you the theme. It'll give you the architect so you can build the landing pages. It'll give you the split testing tool. The um, There's even the, the quiz builder so you can run quiz-based funnels. Um, really, you do need the full membership itself. And then AWeber for email marketing. That is where you collect your email leads. That is a system that you program with your autoresponder sequence. So it will automatically help you build the relationship with your subscribers. And that is the system you use for your daily broadcast emails. So that's the tech stack. I don't care which way you're going. I do recommend that. There is a little tweak to it here. And we're now into the $500 budget approach. So First question you need to ask yourself is how can you best create content? You need to figure out what is your core content creation strategy, written posts, podcasts, or videos. You choose one because humans will either listen, we will watch, which is obviously listening and watching, or we will read. There's the three ways you consume content. Therefore, you need to figure out which way is easiest for you to publish content. And if they're all challenging, well, you're going to have to get good at one of them. So pick one. If I had my choice, I would wave a magic wand and deem myself a great blog writer because your blog content that lives on your optimized WordPress blog is going to get picked up by Google. There's more people searching Google every day than any other search engine in the world by far. And you would effectively be able to get the most traffic. Plus you control the environment so you can display pop-ups over your content. I believe it's the fastest path to list growth. My wife's list is um, six figures, you know, hundreds of thousands of subscribers have gone through her list. And, and a big part of the reason why her list has grown so fast is she used writing as her core content strategy and still writes great blog posts to this day. Now the flip mode of that, I saw my wife create significant success writing blog posts. I thought I had to blog. So the milesbeckler.com website has been up since I believe 2010. I've been publishing very, very intermittently um, from about 2012 through about 2016, trying to force myself to write, but I don't love writing. It's not in my DNA. It's not my core content strategy. It wasn't until I really was all in on YouTube. And then it was like, wow, this is fun. I like this whole video thing. Then I built a system to transcribe and edit my content and get it onto my blog. So it took me many, many years that were wasted in before I found uh, of trying to produce content before I found my core content marketing strategy. If you like talking, but you don't want to like have to get ready every day to be on camera, or you just don't like being on camera, go the podcast route. Podcasts are an amazing way to grow your audience, to grow your reach. It's a very intimate experience with people when they pop in their earbuds and they have that one-to-one -one, and you can do a daily podcast that delivers excellent value and you can definitely get known and grow a massive, massive audience quickly. Um, 
You can build all the traffic you would ever need to build an incredibly successful business through podcasting alone. So again, the freight train approach, you are at zero, you are at static, you are a diesel locomotive connected to hundreds of cars filled with millions of tons of whatever is in the shipping containers, right? So it takes an incredible amount of energy to get that momentum going forward. Be ready for that. Invite it, welcome it. When you're, when you feel like you're just chug, chug and everything's tough, you're right where you should be. Breakthrough, keep going. It will will get easier as you get better flexing the muscle. You have to create one great piece of content every day for 90 days. I don't care if you're doing podcasting, videos, or blogging. That is really where you have to get to because you need to flex the muscle. You need to create those new neuro firings, those new neuro pathways in your brain. You need to create new habits, the new habit of being a producer of content. How do you do that? You produce content day in and day out like it's your job because it is for 90 days straight. If you can only do one piece of content, great piece of content every other day, and then it's a 180 day challenge and you're going to do 90 pieces of content in 180 days. I really highly recommend you condense that learning curve down. Um, the big question is how fast do you want the desired result? So the faster you get into content creation mode, you get better at creating your core content, the faster you can move on to the next steps in the learning curve. Um, but ultimately it is up to you. I do honor the fact that everyone's life situation um, is different and we all have different time constraints, time restraints and needs. Um, push yourself is all I'm going to say in that situation. You can do more than you think you can. I know you can, cause I'm currently amazed at what I'm putting out. Um, didn't think Think this was possible for me and it's been one step at a time focus on one core content strategy only at first this is so important focus on one if you're doing the video thing just do the video thing don't move on to any of the next steps in the path until you are putting out your daily videos and you're like i got this this is easy for me it took four months of publishing a video a day every day before i was able to breathe. Like I couldn't even come up for air every day was like consumed, totally tired at the end of the day because it took all of my life energy to keep my business going. Right. I didn't quit my job or anything. Right. Like I, I just niched out enough time every day to get a video out and just boom, then back to doing my normal stuff. But then it got easier and easier and easier over time. That's when I added on my list growth part. Then after that, I added on my three pillar content marketing strategy. We'll talk about those in the future, but one core content strategy first, you're going to dominate it, put out 90 pieces of content in 90 days. If you're committed, you're going to throw your hat over the fence here inside of the content and conversion forums. I've got an area that, um, you can start your own 90 day challenge thread where you could announce your channel. You can announce what you're doing. And then every day, if you want to come in and put a link in your personal thread, keep it all in one thread. So it'll keep it nice and neat and organized. Um, keep yourself accountable, pop your, your daily link in there to keep yourself accountable. Let us know you're doing the work. Uh, you can get some encouragement. You can get feedback if you want, but ultimately it's just mainly about that accountability. Um, my first videos were terrible, right? They just were not great videos. And that's okay. You'll get better over time. Uh, no one was great at basketball. Shooting basketball is the first time they tried it, right? It's the fact that they've the greatest shooters in the world shoot thousands of baskets. Every, they practice more than anybody else. They've spent more time doing the craft. So this is, this is how you get going and get good at the craft. Then you, the next thing you want to add on when your core content strategy gets easy is adding your first lead magnet, which is how you grow your list. You're going to take one big idea and you're going to turn it into a free giveaway. I've got the whole big idea training to help you really learn how to come up with and analyze and find this big idea for you. And you're going to test different things. Um, I didn't get my first opt-in going on my channel for months. I think it was month five um, that I actually got my first opt-in going. You can build your lead magnet while you're doing your 90 day challenge. It can be, which mine is now on milesbeckler.com. It can actually be a lot of your different videos linked together in a more coherent, cohesive way. So you might be able to take some of your videos that you've made in the first two months and turn it into a seven day fast start boot camp, right? You can do a seven day boot camp to losing weight for guys over 50, divorced guys over 50. And you just go grab seven of the videos you already made, add a little bit of extra content, link them together nice and neat and tidy. Boom, there it is. Now all you need is your opt-in page and you're you know, tied into your email autoresponder system. 
Give your audience an experience through your lead magnet. That's so key is to give them an experience. So if, if you're in the weight loss segment, the experience doesn't have to be losing the weight. A lot of people kind of mistake that idea of like, oh, I need to give them the end result. No, no, no. You need to give them an experience to get them off the path. So ultimately, if I'm a 52 year old guy, I'm a couch potato. I spend all my evenings drinking beer, eating Cheetos after work. And like, I'm just like, that's my life. And I find your content and I go through your opt-in and you give me a seven day challenge and I take your challenge and sure enough, I'm getting off the couch and I'm walking around the block twice a day, every day I'm on the path. If you can help me make that little tiny shift, not only am I going to be like, wow, like I trust this guy. I feel better. I'm going to have an experience and it's based on your help. You are quickly moving into the role of being the trusted advisor in that situation. So figure out what that is for you, for your audience, how you can help them, help them take a step, right? It's, the, it's not goal achieved moment here. It's taking a step in the right direction to get them going, get them an experience get them a little bit closer to solving their goal. Um, the lead magnet analogy here I have is if you're moving, you're backing up the U-Haul truck, your garage is full of boxes and furniture. You open the garage, you hop out of the truck and two neighbors walk up, right? And the first neighbor walks up and he's like, Hey, give me a hundred bucks and I'll help you move all that stuff in your garage, into your truck. And you're just like this guy, the second person walks up to the boxes, grabs a box and he just starts helping. He's like, yo, all these go in the truck. And you're like, yeah, are you serious? He's like, yeah, man, I got you. Who in that situation do you like? Who do you trust, right? Who are you more compelled to reciprocate? Who do you want to buy a 12 pack of beer and a pizza for? Who do you want to just give a hundred dollars to at the end of that day? It's not the person who walks up to you demanding money before they're going to help you. It's the person who just jumps in and helps you. Those are the people it's human nature at this point. Those are the people who we want to reciprocate and make sure they're taken care of. That's how this entire brand is built. Every single person who's joined this membership didn't find me from an ad and get persuaded from some fancy sales copy to join. They have found other content. I've been so helpful through my free content, so helpful through my emails that now that this is available, the mindset is like, oh my gosh, I am in. Miles is super helpful. He's helped me on this path. I am all in. I'm ready to take it to the next level. And there's trust. And that's really what you need to create for your people. I think that moving analogy is really, really powerful. So who are you compelled to reciprocate with in that scenario? And make sure you're taking that approach with your audience is the goal. So the lead magnet theory. Um, different types of lead magnets you can create. You can tell the story that's not being told. These lead to great secrets type headlines. So the secret to blank for blank. So the secret to weight loss for guys over 50, um, that can be when you're actually presenting a counterintuitive idea that is the story not being told. Um, why is the normal solution not working? I talked a lot about this in the big idea video. It's the idea of like selling against the sales letter. So if you go look at all your competitors, they're all probably touting the same similar things, right? There's a lot of me too. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah, me too. How can you be different when everyone else is, or how can you zig when everyone else is zagging, right? Super powerful for you to stand out. You become known and you also will really help them get, it, it just, it, it becomes like a mindset shift or a kind of a game changer for them. What did you or your clients do differently to get the results, right? You, you've helped a dozen people lose a hundred pounds or more. Why? How? How did you do it different than everyone else? This can be in a case study format, um, or you can obviously just kind of break it out into a boot camp or a course itself. And then really keep in mind that your lead magnet should relate to your affiliate offers. So if your affiliate offer is your core, one of your core offers, you think from the get go, right? We're, we're testing it, but you think it's Organifi. The green smoothie idea of Organifi, getting those tubs of Organifi is one of the solutions that you want to promote. Make sure that in the story and in your lead magnet, one of the solutions that helped you overcome your goal or has helped your clients overcome the goal is the green smoothies. Like adding on a green smoothie a day is one of those things mixed in with weight loss and that with exercise and and portion control, that's that's the key to, to losing weight for guys over 50. And if you don't have time to, to cut up all the kale and wash all the kale and do all of the, the green stuff, right? That you don't have a blender, then just grab this green powder, two scoops of it, shake it up in a bottle of water, boom, you're in, you're out, you get all the nutrients you need, your body gets what it needs and it can start to lose weight. That's how you can take an idea, a big idea of a seven day boot camp 
then leads right into that affiliate offer itself because they got to do green smoothies as a part of the seven day boot camp. Oh, you don't have a blender? Oh, you don't have time to go prepare all of the vegetables, the pounds and pounds of vegetables every week? Great. Buy this shortcut through your affiliate link. You make cash. Not only do you make commissions, but you know that one in what was it? One in two people are going to ascend to spend nearly $200 on that product, meaning you'll get recurring commissions on average for every sale you drive to them. So different types of lead magnet ideas, the things you can create, interview an expert or interview three experts, right? Go find the, the biggest names in weight loss. And you might have to reach out to 10 or 20 to get the one, two or three yeses. Go for it. Do audio interviews are fine. If you want, you can do like a Skype video interview. There's a Skype recorder to where you can just record straight through Skype. It's free. Um, do an interview with the product creator, get their story out. If you can get access to them, look on their JV page for contact information. Um, sometimes they want to see that you have a list and you have an audience already, but other times they'd be willing to hop on a phone for 30 minutes to create this really cool interview that can become your giveaway. Blade, that lends a lot of credibility towards the product that you're promoting. Um, create a cheat sheet. I think one of the ways that I could kind of go back and, and re-spice up my Facebook advertising um, funnel would be to create a cheat sheet, right? The cheat sheet to Facebook ads, the one page that'll make sure your campaigns are done right. And it's got all the things and the steps you need to have a seven day boot camp. That's probably the most similar to what I could be a seven step boot camp, also to what I'm currently running. That's getting about 45, 48% conversion rates for me. You can do a free video training. This works really well. If it's got a video sales letter that you're going to promote, or you're promoting a video course on the back end, get them used to consuming videos and getting value from videos, obviously a PDF, a free report or a free book. You can do a free webinar. Cool thing about a free webinar is you can start running traffic to an opt-in page for a webinar that's in the future. So you could say next Saturday, I'm doing a free webinar. That's going to teach you the secret to blank opt in and get notified when that shows up and you're collecting emails and you really haven't even created the giveaway at that point in time. Um, we do live in a society that has an instant gratification bias. So make sure you're giving them something valuable while they wait, um, but it is a, a possible approach, a free webinar. And then the, the case study, right? I've used the case study in my uh, Facebook funnel. That's what's been running on that Facebook funnel. It's not the greatest converting. I think it's like 38% conversion rate, um, but it's good enough conversion rate that I ran that for months and months and months. Um, the goal of the lead magnet, one easy to implement idea. I got that pluralized, but um, one easy to implement idea is key. You want to get them on the path, right? Help them get off the couch and just walk around the block twice. That is the path to losing weight for the certain type of person. If that's your niche market, Jay Abraham's strategy of preeminence, give results in advance. You gotta be the guy who just shows up and helps not the guy or gal who's just, okay, give me money and I'll help you. No, 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 no. In this world, we, it's required for people to give value first for us to really know, like, and trust them. It's not hundred percent required. It's just so difficult to have to put all those persuasion mechanisms and copy and all those pressure cooker moments together to make a sale versus attracting them, right? You can, you can do a lot more with honey than you can vinegar, I think. So the lead magnet tech and setup. So the thrive leads pop up. That's for, if you have content on your blog and you want your opt-in to pop up, that video will give you access to this. Again, all these our links are going to be below the video. Um, thrive architect landing page, how to create the actual landing page is in that video there. I think you need to go through two videos. They changed the uh, interface that we use. So I, I made a follow-up video. Uh, it'll be right there in the playlist. Then the AWeber, AWeber list and the follow-up, how to actually physically set up your follow-up sequence, and then how to set up your broadcast segment inside of AWeber. This brings you to phase three. So at this point, you have your core content strategy going. You don't stop your core content strategy to build all of this out. You add it on. So you've done your core content strategy enough to where it's easy enough that you have breathing room to work on the next learning curve and challenge. That's when you create your lead magnet and you want to get this tested as soon as you can. Be sure you really put out your first lead magnets fast. You're not trying to create some massive, amazing thing that takes you weeks and weeks to build. You want something you pop out 
in a weekend type situation so you can start running traffic to see if people actually want it, right? We gotta get our ideas out into the wild to see if the audience responds to them. Then you start email marketing because at this point, your list is growing because you have traffic coming in from your audience growth, from your core content. Then you have your lead magnet that brings people onto your email list. Once they're done with your autoresponder, they're sitting on your broadcast segment and you need to email them regularly to further give them value, help them get closer to achieving their goals. This is also when you get to promote additional affiliate products. So helpful and infotaining emails will build the relationship fast. Um, do a 90 day challenge, email marketing, send an email a day, every day for 90 days. I think you'll be amazed at the results I have been in my life. My wife has done this before. It's amazing. And our, our self-talk is like, Ooh, I don't know. People unsubscribe and da, da, da. I get so many thank you emails. It's absolutely incredible. It's the fastest relationship building process I know of. I'm a huge fan of it at minimum, increase your frequency, do at least two or three times what you think you can or should, um, a minimum of every other day emails, I think you should really focus on. And then, so what's cool at this point is you're starting to use your emails as kind of ideas for more content, or as you're doing your core content, you're starting to email back to your core content to drive additional traffic to your core content ideas. And your core content pieces might have affiliate links in them, right? You might be doing a review of the three best blenders for those people who don't the organic buy. And then in the review of the three blessed blenders, it's all affiliate links to Amazon. You got the Vitamix, the Nutribullet, the Ninja, whatever it is, right? That is a great way for you to continue to add more revenue through giving value. So going beyond your 90 day challenge, once you're done with your 90 day challenge, you need to continue making content. You don't stop. You can shift into what I call the marathon runner's pace, which is for me, it's been three videos per week is what I've done for about a year and a half. So the first four months were uh, a video every day, just to really flex that muscle enough to make it habit, make it second nature. Then for the last uh, 20 months after that, it's been three videos per week. I just went Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Sometimes I do Monday, Wednesday, Saturday. I give myself a little wiggle room there, um, but that's it. And then I'm super consistent. Sy then you want to get to where you're syndicating your core content onto all three pillars. So this is when I worked on adding on my second pillar I added on was the blog. So I added on a team who transcribes my videos with a tool called otter.ai. Then they take the transcription, clean it up, edit it, make it a nice readable post, publish it onto my blog. Then we rip out the MP3 file, put that MP3 file up on a podcast directory. Now my content is in all three formats, right? The video to watch, the audio on podcast to listen, and the written word to read. So it doesn't matter what learning style my audience has, my content is being prepared for them because not everyone wants to watch videos. Not everyone wants to listen to podcasts. Not everyone wants to read but most people want to do one of those three things. So get your content on all three media and you'll be amazed at how much extra reach you get with that same content you've already creating. Then start collaborating with the other people in your niche. When you've built up a, a bank of 90 videos, you've got some, some YouTube mojo, right? You're able to start reaching out to people, asking them to do collaborations. I personally prefer when I'm a guest on their show because it's literally an opportunity for me to give value to their audience and it's a way for them to introduce me to their audience. I very rarely have people on my show because it's kind of a leech the audience type thing. I don't really want to give my audience's eyes on people who I consider kind of fake. I get, I get, I get offers from fake gurus all day, every day asking to be on my channel because they want access to you, my audience. And I say, nope, sorry, you got something to sell and I'm not letting you come on my channel to sell things to my people. Then when I go on other people's podcasts or videos, I don't sell anything. I don't promote things. I don't even promote my opt-in. I'm just there to give as much value as I can. I want to stand out. I want to be one of those guests that when, when people listen, they're like, whoa, this Miles dude lit it up. I'm going to go find him and they'll find me. They maybe follow me here, follow me there, find me here, find me there. They'll find their way into my funnel. I don't need to, to promote it aggressively. I need to be the guy who's just helping move the boxes, right? And I'll do that on someone else's platform because it's great brand reach. Um, so guest posting, guest podcasts, and guests on videos. One of the interesting things about podcasting, every podcast, not every, most podcasts that are based on an interview process need new guests very, very regularly. So you're actually kind of doing them a service when you show up and they want guests who have 
interesting stories. Yay. Because stories are what make everything work. Cool. That is the $500 approach. That is the bootstrap approach. You can grow it. That's how I grew it with this channel, this brand, now this product that you're watching. So at the two year mark, I had made somewhere around $300,000 in affiliate revenue from the Miles Beckler brand alone before ever launching my own product. So that's what I'm talking about, about you can use pure effort and energy to create enough momentum to grow an audience, to grow a list, to be of service to those individuals, connect them with the things that they want. Ultimately, that will generate revenue for you. And then you can create your own products that you get maximum margins on because I get a lot better margins on membership rebills than I do on affiliate program things I promote. I'm happy to do the affiliate stuff because I didn't have to think about the sales copy. I didn't have to build all of this that you're in right now. It limited the number of moving parts I had to figure out, gave me the ability to earn while I learn. And that brought us to this point. And let's get on to the 5,000 dollar in the first year budget approach. So this is the pay-per-click approach. Um, your number one goal is to grow your list fast and then grow your relationship with that list fast. You can't just grow a list and ignore the list. You're going to get straight into daily emails almost immediately because you have to build the relationship with the list. That is the core. So you can do a lot more split testing. Your energy is going to be focused on smaller things within the business. Whereas the $500 approach, you're like, I'm just going to go put content, 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 content. And you create this library here. It's like, I got an opt-in page and I got a bridge page and I am going to geek out on those two pages until I get this thing converting at 50% and this thing converting at 75, 80%. That's the whole point. So you're going to use the thrive architect and the thrive optimized tools a lot more because you're so focused on those little conversion points. Cause it's, it's ad landing page, bridge page. They're on your email list. Now you follow up with them. So that's the key. Um, email marketing is your make or break. The goal of the front end of this approach is simply to make your money back. If you end your year having made $5,000, right? Where you put 5,000 in and you got all 5,000 back out of your ads. That is a huge victory because the byproduct of that is going to be a very big list that you've grown. And that list is an asset you own and you can market forever. And you've already got your money back. So you can put your money right back in because you know, it's going to come right back out. So really your goal is to make a break even funnel set another way. Um, that's the key. So the tech stack options here, I, the recommended WordPress funnel is, is right there on top because I do recommend that. If you're going this route as an affiliate, it, you can use click funnels. Click funnels works extremely well for the opt-in side. It's when you get to the fancier membership stuff that click funnels is extremely limiting when it has to start to tie into other third party systems, but tying into the APIs of the email systems is super basic. It is $97 per month for something that's super basic, but for some people who want to really kind of minimize the learning curve, that actually is one of the approaches. So you can get access to that there. And again, plug in a Weber, do not use click funnels at the level that has the email process only use their $97 a month program. If you're going to use it and here, your goal is to maximize the speed of testing. That's all you really want to do. You can test effectively on both. I've got trainings for both of them and here's actually the trainings. So how to build it on WordPress. You'll see it up there on that top one, the click funnels build. I show you how to build it. That was with a little bit older version, but it's the same basic stuff. They haven't changed the interface all that much. Um, and then you need to create the follow-up sequence in your, um, a Weber follow-up, and then you need to create the broadcast segment. I'm going to be sure I haven't mentioned it here in the links below. There'll be a link to the video where my wife and I talk about what to write in your follow-up sequence. So I'll, I'll make sure that gets down there as well. Before you run traffic, you need to create your lead magnet, your landing page and get your follow-up sequence in your autoresponder. So this is kind of the opposite of the, the $500 approach. The $500 approach was get that content going, flex the muscle, get going here. You actually need somewhere to send traffic with an offer, a direct response offer saying in exchange for your email, I'm gonna give you a result, right? That's your landing page. Then you need the thing that gives them the result. That's your lead magnet. And then you need the follow-up sequence and the ability to broadcast them emails. That's your autoresponder. You're looking for one 
big idea. Definitely. If you're going this route, go through the big idea workshop before you really dig in. Cause you need to come up with a compelling curiosity inducing, super interesting tweak on the world. Cause most of your audience members have heard it all before and need something that's unique. So it will stand out as an idea that's worthy of them clicking on worthy of them entering their email address for and worthy, worthy of them consuming your content and even listening to you. Right? If you don't have a big idea running through all of this, they're gonna be like, ah, that's boring. I've heard that. Like, oh, you want to lose weight? Well, consume less calories and, and exercise more. They're like, ah, eh, that doesn't sound very fun. But if you're like, you want to lose weight, go, go eat more fat. And I'll show you how eating more fat can help you lose weight. Huh? Okay. What? Like I'm here. What? I can eat ice cream and pizza and still lose weight. How's that work? Right? If you can create that sort of a hook, the ice cream pizza loving person who wants to lose weight is going to be all ears, my friend, because it's so different. It's a big idea, but you got to be able to back it up with proof. We go over that in the big idea course. Anyways, curiosity plus a big promise is going to get you conversions. That that's true. Like curiosity. We, when we get those emails with a curiosity inducing subject lines, like what? Like, I don't get that. How's that work? Click, right? You see the ad where it's like, ah, like lose weight while eating pizza and ice cream. What? Like, okay, click. I'm on it. I want to see what this is all about. That's how you get conversions quickly with paid ads. Um, then your story plus the proof of others is really truly how you become real. If you notice my whole kind of diatribe or moment on the soapbox about you have to have a story, you have to have created a result in your life and then you need to help other people. Remember that was in the beginning of the training. That's not what you do for the $500 approach. Everyone has to do that. So you still have to be sure you actually have helped yourself and you have the ability to help others accomplish and achieve a goal that they desire before you get started. Cause that's going to be the thread that runs through everything. Then you're into split testing, right? You want to split test your, your big idea, which is ultimately the opt-in offer. Um, the big idea can be down to the uh, headline, but generally your whole landing page, your whole funnel, the whole free giveaway is going to be all tailored towards a big idea. So that's the first thing that you're testing is the different big ideas that you come up with to see which ones get better response and reaction from your audience, from, from the world at large, from cold people who don't know who you are. Then you test your headlines, the headline on the ad, the headline on your landing page and the headlines of your emails, which is effectively your subject line. Now you don't need to split test all the subject lines every day. When you're sending a new email every day, that is effectively a test. And you just want to monitor your rates. You might find something that you email day 43 of a 90 day email email challenge that gets a 68% open rate and all your other emails got a 22% open rate and something you said in that email, just clicked with people. Those are the things you're looking for because out of that subject line or that hook, or maybe it's a click through rate instead, then you can reverse engineer. Why did that get such a greater response than everything else? And how can you take that idea and work it all the way back into the big idea, to the landing page, to the opt-in offer? That's how you're able to test through your emails and ultimately you're, you're nonstop testing. You want to look at your click through rates on your ads, your opt-in rate on your offer for the landing page, and then the email open rates are the big ones. So split testing your opt-in offer, the big idea is first, then you can even test the thing you're giving away, right? You could test a PDF versus an audio file versus a video training, find out what actual medium is most interesting to your audience. Then there's the idea of a market market message match. This is a kind of one of the Dan Kennedy ideas. That's it's so true. And it comes from the old direct mail days where the list that you're mailing is the most important thing. It's not the copy on the letter you mailed. It's the list. And I'm using the direct response of the eighties when they use direct mail as the example here. And what it is, is that you might have a big idea that is excellent and it just doesn't click with your 50 year old guys trying to lose weight but it might click with 30 year old guys trying to lose weight. So sometimes you've got the message, right? But you've got the audience wrong and you can use Facebook to split test different audiences. So there's kind of two variables going on, on every single time that you run a new funnel essentially, because it's the audience that is seeing your messaging. And then it's the actual results of the people when they reach your page. So you might actually have, better response from a different segment of a different audience. I don't think it's the best idea for you to constantly test all of the audiences. So what I'm saying is if you 
are moving forward, helping 50 year old guys who are divorced lose weight. And that's, that's, you're committed to that group. Maybe open up your parameters to 40 year old guys, right? Don't go down to like the 18 year olds. Don't leave all of the kind of, um, demographic variations wide open. That's going to be way too much traffic. That's going to be way overwhelming for your Facebook ad campaigns. Maybe open it a little bit, but only start to try those things when it's not performing as well as you expected, because maybe a small tweak to your audience could get you the result that you think is there. All right, split testing your headlines. Here's a few super simple headlines to test how to blank in blank. The first blank is the desired result. The second blank is a specific amount of time, how to lose 14 pounds in 10 days, how to hit 200 yard drives in three weeks, how to get desired results in specific amount of time. People love specifics. You need to be able to deliver on these promises though. So no lose 60 weight, lose 60 pounds in three days headlines, how to blank without blank. This is the idea of we want a result, but we don't want to give up something. So how to lose weight without giving up pizza and ice cream, right? You have to be able to deliver on that promise, but that person who's like sitting there on Facebook with their ice cream, just loving that pizza they just ate, but they want to lose weight. If you are able to connect with them in that moment, which I might be a, a bit far out on the idea here, um, it, that kind of a headline is going to connect with them. Um, Secrets to blank revealed. The secret to blank revealed. This is the, the counterintuitive kind of, um, you're coming from the angle of you found a secret within the marketplace. It's the contrarian approach to the niche. It'll get a lot of attention. Um, just even using the word secrets, it's a power word that, that will just get more attention because we all love knowing secrets. Um, so, so positioning your whole opt in, your whole ad, your whole funnel as you're revealing a secret to help them get the result that they want, the secret not being told in their industry, right? The, the secret that the weight loss gurus aren't telling you type thing. Um, and remember, everyone is tuned into WII FM. What's in it for me. So stay focused on their desired outcome. Don't talk about your product. Don't talk about your offer. Don't talk about you talk about their desired result. And then when you get into the content, that's when you share your story and they'll be able to live vicariously. They'll be able to imagine themselves, future pace themselves, getting the result you got. And that's where you want to get them to. So where is your perfect audience? This is really, really key because a lot of people think that Facebook is the be all end all for, for paid marketing. It's a great paid marketing platform. I've had great success with it, but it's not for everyone in every business. You want to choose one platform and go all in on that one for your first year. So many people spread themselves too thin. That's how you get overwhelmed. And as you learned earlier, overwhelm is the number one challenge facing you creating the business that you desire. If it's anything to do with business to business, I would go straight to LinkedIn. So if you want to promote software to business owners, services to business owners, I would go directly to LinkedIn because that's where business owners are. They're looking for talent. They're building relationships. They're networking. That's where you want to show up in that situation. If it's a hobby or a lifestyle based thing, Facebook is fantastic. You need to water down your promises on your Facebook ads. If they're aggressive promises, lose, like even the words lose weight might get your entire account banned, right? If you say make money in an ad, you may very well get your entire account banned on that first ad. They will not warn you by any means. And, and with Facebook, Instagram's right there too. Um, lifestyle, fashion, uh, there's jewelry. There's so many ways that that can work. Google is great for problem solution. How do I fix blank? How do I drive the golf ball farther? How do I correct my tennis swing? Those kinds of questions are what people search on Google. And when you show up with a very, very focused um, lead magnet that will really truly address that entrance point, that, that problem for them, you may find a great entrance point to your funnel that could be cash flow positive or break even. And in this world of the $5,000 approach, when you get one funnel that's working pretty well, it's kind of break even, you can look for other entrance points, right? So if the tennis analogy wants to go a little further, like how to, you know, the backhand, there's the forehand, there's all the little aspects of the game, just like golf, there's chipping, there's driving, there's putting, etc. Those can all be different entrance points for your list, ultimately. Um, on YouTube is great for anything visual, for how-to stuff, hobbies, DIY, um, but it, anything that can be shown visually can actually work really well on YouTube. I've got friends who do really, really well with YouTube compared to Facebook. They're getting much, much lower cost per click and cost per lead. Um, 
Pinterest is is heavily women. It's a, a little bit older of a demographic. Um, mothers and home and garden do really, really well on Pinterest. Um, I've had great success with Pinterest organically. I have not dialed in Pinterest paid, but again, I'm all in still on the one that works for me. I don't necessarily feel like I need to go distract myself, confuse myself, and, and add on more work to potentially overwhelm myself because I've got one core thing going in this world. So if you're going into Facebook, there's an audience shortcut that's rarely talked about that can help you really truly target the buyers from your competitors' products. And you need to effectively rent a list of your competitors' recent buyers. Renting a list goes way back to the direct mail days. Um, back in the day when Dan Kennedy or Gary Bensavenga was gonna mail out a mailing package or Gary Halbert or any of the greats, they would go rent a list. So if they had a astrology offer that they were gonna send out, and it's this astrology offer that they built, they would go rent the subscriber list of an astrology magazine and they would get the they would rent the names and addresses of everyone who subscribes to an astrology magazine, current subscribers, actual paying customers and they would mail their offer that was an astrology offer to all those people on the astrology list it's that message market match that we talked about a minute ago so you can go to nextmark.com and you can search around for lists that are hyper relevant to your product offering if you're in the golf space you can go find a golf list of golf magazine subscribers but it goes beyond the magazines that's just a really easy example um, Anyone who's bought something through a catalog, through mail, even people who have bought through big time retailers, those retailers are reselling people's information on these list broker kind of places. So you'll want to get 3,000 to 5,000 records. You want email addresses is the most important record that you're after, and they need to be from one country, your main country you're targeting. The reason here is that when you upload it, you need 1,000 active Facebook users. Um, they generally have like a minimum purchase. There's like a minimum number that you have to purchase. So buy the minimum if you want, upload it as a custom audience. If you don't have enough in a custom audience, go buy the minimum again, um, but maybe just buy 5,000 if it's a better deal. You could talk Talk to these list brokers. You can reach out to them directly to help them help. They are there to help you find the list that's great for you. That's how they make money is when you rent the list from them. Ultimately, you want a buyer's list. Find the buyer's list. You want to go take someone else's customers who have bought something that is hyper relevant to you. It's like, oh, if they bought that golf club training tool, they would love my golf membership program. Perfect. That's the kind of relevance you want. And then when you upload it, you create a custom audience that you could target. So you're literally able to directly target their buyers. Then you create a lookalike audience where you're able to target the people on Facebook who are similar to the buyers. This is a huge shortcut and it costs some money up front, but that's why I said, you gotta bring a budget. You gotta be willing to invest in this because having a, for me, my Facebook ads work so well because I have, you know, 800,000 visits a month. So I've got this huge retargeting pixel. I've got 30,000 customers over the years that we've brought in. So I've got this huge customer segment and I've got all of my email subscribers, hundreds of thousands of emails. I can go upload a list of 250,000 email subscribers those are assets I've built. If you don't have those, you can go rent them, which is a total shortcut. Then monitoring your campaigns, because if you're paying for traffic, you need to become an absolute stickler of the data. You have to really, really monitor the campaigns. The number one key KPI, which is a key performance indicator that you're going to track is the cost per lead. You're going to become a CPL geek, a cost per lead geek, and you're going to test different campaigns. You're going to test different landing pages and the one number you always come back to. So you're always testing and making sure that, that this one indeed beat this one is the cost per lead. This is you versus you. Don't ask Miles. Well, I've got this. What is this a good CPL? Uh, it doesn't matter really. It's about you beating your past numbers. Me, I get leads for like 60 cents or lower right now, but I know people who get leads for $5 and lower and they're doing great. They're loving $5 leads. To them, a $10 lead is expensive. So it's just, it's a function of the, the niche. It's a function of everything. You want the least expensive, 
highest quality lead you can get. So start, you're going to get your baseline. Your first 100 leads, there will be a number there. When you get to 100, that's a good working cost per lead. If it's $2.23, great. That's where your benchmark is. Now you need to figure out how to get it lower. You get it lower by finding better audience segments, cheaper clicks, cheaper audience segments, and then ultimately increasing the conversion rate through split testing on your landing page is going to be the kind of biggest boom to your business there. Every day, you should track the number of clicks that come in, the number of leads that you get, and the number of sales that you get. Track it in a separate spreadsheet. Pull the data from outside of Facebook or whatever system you are. Go to Google Analytics, load your actual, I do this the day after, so I'll look back at yesterday because all the data concludes. So I'll go in and I'll look at my landing page for my uh, for yesterday for my actual opt-in page URL and I'll see how many clicks did that page get. 193. Great. I enter 193. Then I go to the email system, go into AWeber. How many leads did I get to that list yesterday? 26. Great. 26. Then I do the math. Oh, I put how much I spent too. So you can get the cost per lead. Um, and then how many sales? So you can, you can kind of get this spreadsheet as big or as small as you want. It can automatically run calculations, right? You could set it up to automatically do calculations based on these metrics. So it's always analyzing your cost per lead for you, but you just want to track. You, you can't improve that which you don't measure. So this is how you measure it. And I like to pull my data from outside of Facebook. I don't trust Facebook. I don't trust Facebook. Have I mentioned that I don't trust Facebook? And I don't think you should either. And I don't think you should trust any paid advertising platform. Use your Google Analytics. Use your actual kind of from within the affiliate program. Did you get any sales yesterday? Use that data right there. And then use your um, opt-in rate from your email service provider from Aweber itself. And that that is the core that you need to track right there. That's the growth. Then you email them over and over. That's the process. That's what you have to do. The job for you at the $5,000 kind of approach in the first year is to build your audiences, to essentially run ads, get clicks, get opt-ins, build relationships via email, and promote to your traffic the different affiliate programs, which is what we're talking about here in the monetize your traffic. So the next question, the logical question here is, where do I publish my affiliate links, right? Where do I actually put these links? So in the thank you page for the opt-in the page they go to immediately after opting in you could turn into what's called a bridge page and you could have a link to the affiliate program there i do not recommend that you hard refresh meta refresh or redirect people directly to the affiliate program you want to take a moment record a video where you introduce yourself you let them know that the free thing they just requested is on its way to their inbox. You can then let them know that you've got some helpful emails showing up in the next couple of days to help them further solve their problem. And by the way, if they want the shortcut that helped you go from zero to hero, click the green button below and learn about the best product in the market to solve whatever problem it may be. Super short, 90 second video, two minute video, could be done on your cell phone. You're going to test these over time. Then you can put your affiliate links on the lead magnet delivery page. So when they click from the email to go get the lead magnet, you can have it there if you choose. I don't run that one, but it's possible. Um, inside of the lead magnet is probably where you're going to get the best clicks. So the idea of in the seven day boot camp to lose weight for, for men over 50 on day four, when you talk about green smoothies, like that link is going to get a lot of clicks over to Organify for you in your autoresponder. So the follow up emails that come out afterwards, and then in your daily broadcast emails and of course, I'm not saying to email offers every day. I hope you didn't assume that. Um, jab, 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 right hook, give value, give value, give value, make relevant offer, give value, give value, give value, make relevant offer. It's always that approach. Testing the different affiliate offers. So you can test different offer types, low ticket products, physical products, trial offers, see which ones get you the best front end conversion, and then see which ones get you the best rebuild conversion. And you want to find that balance that works best for you. You like lots of front end conversions as long as they're actually paying the bills and get you long time conversions. Cause a bunch of commissions on dollar trials that don't turn into rebills is not actually going to be something you could build a business on. Test different URLs for the same product. When you go to the affiliate resources page, oftentimes they'll have a webinar, a video sales letter, and a text sales letter. So it's one product, but there's many entrance points that they've created for affiliates to use. Test the different entrance points. Use tracking in your URLs. See if their text, see if their text letter 
outperforms their video sales letter. See if their video sales letter outperforms their pre-recorded evergreen webinar. You don't know what's going to work best for different markets, different audiences. So test them and let the data guide you create separate bridge pages and, and pretty links plugin. I'm gonna tell you about that in a second. So the different bridge pages is essentially like they opt in, they get to your bridge page. We have a video introducing the number one product that help you get the result. Well, you do that two times over and it links to a different product each time I would mention what the product is. So in your bridge video, you're saying essentially, you know, one of the biggest things that helped me lose the weight was getting on the green smoothie kick. And if you want to know my shortcut to making the best green smoothies, click the green button below to learn now. So that's page one. Page two might be in my process of losing, losing weight. One of the big things for me was the probiotics, really getting my digestive system tuned in. I was able to actually digest my food better. And that was one of the biggest things that helped me lose weight. If you want to know about the probiotic solution I use, click the green button below. Those are the two ClickBank offers we talked about earlier. Then you run a tool that will split test your traffic. It's called pretty links. You need to get the pro. It's not very expensive. It's what I use to mask all of my links. So when you see, um, content and conversion.com forward slash hosting, that's done with pretty links but you're able with a pro to split traffic. So you create one URL and it sends 50% here and it sends 50% there. Um, so what you would do is in the thank you page on your autoresponder. So your autoresponder, when they subscribe or actually in thrive leads, when they subscribe, you have programmed a thank you page. So it says after they subscribe, send them to this URL, you use a pretty link there. It splits them down to the two different offers. You're effectively split testing affiliate offers after after the opt-in to see which one works best. Then how do you increase conversions? You are not um, at the whims of their conversion mechanisms. You have the ability to add value to their conversions, to their sales cycle. And the more value you add often, the better conversions that you'll get. So you can have your readers, your subscribers, your audience, and your traffic send you the receipt for buying the product in order to get something special from you. So using the Organifi idea in an email, you could say, Hey, free bonus this week only. Anybody who buys a, bo a jar or bottle of Organifi will get my seven best smoothie recipes free. I normally sell this as an ebook on Kindle for nine 95, but I'll give it to you free. If you get a bottle of Organifi this week, just send me your receipt after you purchase and I'll send you that book right out. They send you their receipt. You click reply, attach the thing, send them a Dropbox link, whatever it is. The logistics, I would never try to automate this because I'm doing a lot of testing. It would take way too much time to try to automate something like this. And really you just want to test different bonuses. Could be a one hour con consultation with you. It could be access to a private Facebook group that was paid or is paid. It could be access to a private webinar so they can ask you their direct questions. It could be an interview series, a uh, bonus training to help them get the result. If the product's missing something, oftentimes you can create a bonus that, that works really well with that. And that can be enough to really take it in the conversions to the next level. Then there's a question of, okay, so I'm increasing my conversions with the affiliate thing as much as I can. What's, what's the, the next fast path to money? I'm offering personal services. There's, there's nothing that's going to create cash flow for you faster than selling services. So if you want to sell services, let's say you do your, your, your personal trainer, that is your job. And you're building a weight loss funnel that you're going to run as an affiliate funnel. But ultimately you'd be willing to do one-on-one -on -one coaching with them, right? You'd be willing to do your normal job with them, focus your ads on your local metropolitan area. So you're still getting the reach. You're still promoting your affiliate stuff, but you have the ability to do these one-on-one -on -one sessions at the gym that you own. If you own a gym, for example, but maybe you don't need to be present and you could just kind of leave the, the geographic targeting wide open and you could do your consultations over Skype essentially. So coaching, consulting, and done for you services are huge in this kind of a situation. This allows you to keep focus on building your core asset, the email list with a nice, neat affiliate marketing funnel on the front end. And then you're really maximizing the revenue on the back end. Once they hit your email list with your services, really powerful way to kind of bump up that income. 
And this, this warrants the discussion of the front end of your funnel versus the back end. Your ads are rarely going to be profitable on the front end. They're just designed to create enough cash flow for you to get your investment out. So you can go put it right back into more ads. So you get this nest egg of a thousand dollars, right? You have a thousand dollars that I can run at any one time in ads. Well, I put it in and it comes right back out because I made enough sales. So I put it right back in again. And it's like, how many times can you move that thousand dollars back in to your marketing funnel into your paid advertising each month? The more times you can cycle that, the more leads you're going to get. You always get your same money back, but your leads grow and you make your money on the back end of the funnel. Um, so having a niche with multiple offers and addicted buyers helps this out a ton. Year one, either approach, deep learning. You're, you're, you're doing deep learning, you're doing skill building, and you're getting data. You're, you're learning what works, what doesn't work. My first year of making videos, like I was learning that mindset videos, which I think mindset is super powerful, one of the big factors of creating a successful business, um, mindset videos just don't get clicks. Tactic videos get click. Facebook videos got a bunch of clicks. So I made a lot of Facebook videos, right? So you're, you're using this as an opportunity to see what things trigger people to action. So you can then go do more of those things while still testing in new ideas. Learn what doesn't work because knowing what doesn't work is as important as what does work. There's the idea of during inventing the light bulb, he found 10,000 experiments that didn't work. And every time was, well, I'm on the path. I know that doesn't work. I'm one step closer to finding out what does work. That mindset and approach here works out really well. Stay observant to the little wins. Those little, like I was talking about earlier in the headline, the headline on an email or subject line that got like a three times the normal click-through rate. Be observant of those kinds of things. The, the ad that all of a sudden drops your cost per click way down, the ad that you have that gets a huge relevant score, that opt-in page that converts at 62%, where all your other ones only, only were at like 25 or 35%. Really take time to analyze in these little victories, why did that happen? Why, why did the audience respond to that? Because there's usually deeper psychology. And when you uncover that deeper psychology, that can lead you to an aha moment that can lead you to a big idea that can literally explode your business to the million dollar level and beyond. So stay observant to the little wins and do a lot more of what works. My wife and I, the business that we run, our main business in the spirituality niche is super simple. And we're doing the exact same things today that we were doing seven years ago right? Six years ago, we have not gotten fancy. We have not gotten off the path. We're not listening to the fake. Oh, you need this. And then you can do that. And then all this. No, no, no. We're just doing this. It worked. It worked at a small scale. We brought in more audience members. It's still working. Cool. Let's just keep doing it. Melanie keeps blogging. I run a little bit of Facebook ads. We do our normal launch sequence. We launch our new things. We mention our membership on the back end. It's working. So one thing a lot of people get going is they'll find something that works a little bit and then they'll go try new stuff and they'll stop doing what worked a little bit. And people who create million dollar businesses have literally just found something that works at a small scale. They made a thousand with it. Cool. Then they made 10. Cool. Then they made a hundred. Wow. And then they made, you know, it's, it's the little things done over long periods of time. There's no magic. There's no big explosion. When your, re when your list reaches thousands of subscribers, you can ask the affiliate managers of the products that you're promoting, if they'll do a kind of private webinar for your audience members, this can be a huge boom to your business. They're going to want to see that you've been driving sales and that you have a list before they're willing to do this. But like, man, this kind of content can be really, really powerful. You can gate it afterwards, but you can invite all your list, all your subscribers, all of your audience to it, and it will create a big time cash injection to your business. They're really good at selling their stuff. They're really good at just to kind of communicating their story in a way that gets people wanting what you offer. So all you need to do in that situation is get a lot of people signed up and lined up to go. Um, monitor your past subject lines. I covered that one, kind of beat that one to death, but there's so much magic in that. That's one of the benefits of the, the 90 day email challenge. Survey your list. Ask them straight up, what's your number one problem with their biggest desired result? They will tell you what their big challenges are. You can create the products for them. You can go research the products for them. You can go create content for them on those topics. It's pretty magical what, what you can learn. People are very willing to tell you what their big challenges are. And your job as an affiliate marketer is to help them solve their problems. So it's actually a really easy way to align it. 
forge yourself a long-term mindset. You got to stay in the game long enough to win the game, right? There's no magic point that happens. I never had a video that, that exploded me onto the scene, blah, blah, blah. Like it's just a lot of little videos that get a few thousand views each stacked on top of each other have now over two years created a massive momentum freight train like momentum be the most helpful person in your segment or your niche. Like A, helping people is awesome. It feels good. It's fulfilling and rewarding. But when you're truly the most helpful person, you just stand out head and tails above the rest. It's the idea of, you know, you back up the moving truck and there's your helpful neighbor who just shows up to help. Like you just want to re re reciprocate, reciprocate. You just want to re reciprocate with him. Um, Bill Gates has a great quote. Most people overestimate what they can do in one year and underestimate what they can do in 10 years. I'll cut that down. I think three to five years is an amazing point that most people in three to five years who really stick with it and really focus on doing the work, the content and conversion side of the work, can create massive business momentum in three to five years. The first year, as I said, trying to prepare you, it's a lot of learning. It's a lot of just accruing data. It's finding a lot of things that don't work and it's getting through those learning curves. But after that year, those little things that start to work click more and more often than by year three and year four, you're really focusing almost all of your energy on things that have proven to work in the past and your results just begin to compound in a major way. That's really where the business gets super exciting. And here on the last slide, you made it to the end. Hashtag badass. Good job, man. Almost two hours in this brute force, super, super fast recording for you. If you, you can have everything you want in your life, if you will help enough people get what they want in their life, it is so, so true. Put their needs first, put their goals first. You will be amazed at what you can create when you focus your energy on being of service to others, really truly help them achieve their goals. They will be your best social media marketers for you when you really stand in that light of being the most helpful person to that audience. Find a little underserved audience and go give lots and lots in value to them. You'll be amazed at what you could create. I thank you for your time. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions about the video and the training, you can reply here below. On that note, I'ma cut it two hours. Good on you. Thank you very much for your time. I look forward to connecting with you on the next training. Until then, be well and remember, go give value, be of service. You are their problem solver. When you really own that, you'll be amazed at what you can create. All right, cool. Till we see you again, catch you on the next video.